Welcome back to Nature News, everybody. I'm Alice Ford, and today we're discussing several stories from around the globe about wildlife, nature, and science. If these are topics you care about, and I think they are, if you're here, then hit that subscribe button and stay tuned. Summer is here and temperatures are rising. With it, so is the concern for a mega drought that is affecting much of North America and Mexico. Now, experts are warning that this could be the driest year on record and potentially the deadliest fire season in decades. Have you ever been to the Gulf of Mexico? Well, it suffers yearly from nitrogen pollution that creates a massive ocean dead zone. This dead zone not only affects marine life, but has a hugely negative effect on the economics of fisheries and farmers. Now, farmers often pump their land full of fertilizer in hopes of increasing the yield. But when soil is already unhealthy or dying, as it is in much of America, this nitrogen actually runs off. Now, it's estimated that since 1990, 31 million tons of nitrogen from corn and soy fields in the Corn Belt contributed to the ocean dead zone and cost farmers more than $400 million in unnecessary fertilizer purchases. A solution all farms should be required to use is adding riparian zones and buffer zones in between cropland and water sources. These buffer zones can be planted with native trees, bushes, and other plants to reduce runoff and absorb more nitrogen that would normally be sent downstream as runoff. Now, speaking of farming, over in Africa, they're cooling the earth by digging holes. This is actually a technique used by farmers in arid landscapes. They dig holes in order to create basically little sinks where rainwater can sit, adding water into the ground instead of adding to runoff. The company Just Dig It makes dry land green again by inspiring and activating farmers in Africa, positively impacting climate change, nature, and people. Now, the company helps degraded landscapes become restored by combining these traditional techniques with new technology and a strong community initiative to the community. They currently have projects in Tanzania and Kenya where natural vegetation has returned after digging these rainwater holes and they have plans to expand into more countries soon. You can actually check out what they're doing and their initiative Green Up to cool down at justdigit.org. Something we need to talk about more is how to protect ourselves from toxic air pollution where we live, work, and play. Now there's a region in Louisiana where industry has led to horrible air pollution that has actually been sickening people for decades and things are actually getting worse. It's called Cancer Alley. An analysis by ProPublica found that a crush of new and industrial plants will increase concentrations of cancer causing chemicals in predominantly black and poor communities. Indeed, the stretch from the Mississippi River between New Orleans and Baton Rouge is nicknamed Cancer Alley because of its concentration of petrochemical facilities where they make everything from plastics and styrofoam to neoprene. Now, not only is toxic air pollution in Louisiana's industrial belt rising in absolute terms, but the estimated air quality relative to its peers is getting worse as well. Many of these new plants planned in Louisiana's petrochemical belt are being built in or near communities that EPA has already estimated have some of the worst and most dangerous air pollution in America. Just across the river in Plaquemine Parish, for instance, the Shintech ethylene plant recently got the green light for a 1.5 billion 300 acre expansion, which will intensify pollution in an area where an EPA model estimates that the toxic levels of cancer causing chemicals to already be double than they are in neighboring Iberville Parish. The new plant is expected to increase those levels by up to 16% in nearby areas. Now, folks here say they don't need a weatherman or a computer model to know which way the wind blows. They can see cancer everywhere, and they blame the plants, and rightfully so. Even if the State Department of Health and other researchers have yet to prove such a link exists. Out of every 10 houses, there's a prospect of one or two people that have died of cancer. This was said by Terry Frazier, a hospital receptionist from St. Gabriel. Not only that, but one in three pregnancies in this area in the 1980s ended in miscarriage. It's pretty easy for companies to build plants in these unincorporated places or outside of big towns where zoning laws are really limited. Industrial facilities, especially ones that create water and air emissions, should be required to own and build buffer zones where people and animals cannot live, work, or play. 
as well as monitor and report all chemicals and effluents released into the air, into the soil and the air. And sadly, this isn't the only place in America where something like this is happening. In Pennsylvania's Allegheny County, they're suffering a similar fate. And that county in particular is actually in the top 2% of counties nationwide for cancer deaths. Now, radon exposure here is the second leading cause of lung cancer nationally, and it's also a known factor in Pennsylvania. So our traffic emissions and unusually high levels of industrial pollution, particularly in this county from Coke ovens, which are used by the steel industry. Now, cancer-causing chemicals have also been found in the drinking water here, and a new study shows that about one in five Pennsylvania residents will die of cancer. Two more things before we go. President Joe Biden is suspending oil and gas leases in the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. This reversal was cheered by many, but the local Republican delegation in Alaska actually called it illegal and misguided. Oil and gas brings a lot of money into Alaska and reversing this drilling program, which was approved by the Trump administration, also revives a political fight over a remote region that's home to polar bears, caribou, and other wildlife, but is also rich in oil. And I've got one last thing this week. Have you heard about a sentinel species? Well, in short, it's a species that shows ecological changes months before most others. They show us the effects of climate and environmental changes before other species, acting as a warning bell for changes to an ecosystem. Now, seabirds are one of these sentinel species, and they're being extremely affected by the changing climate. Human activities affect ecosystems both directly and indirectly through anthropogenic climate change. And the effects, however, are not evenly distributed across the globe, with the Northern Hemisphere suffering much more quickly than its Southern counterpart. A new study in science actually points out that many seabirds are suffering from nesting failure. Now, researchers from all over the world actually get together, join forces, and analyze some long-term monitoring data from about 66 species of seabirds from the last 50 years. The study was actually just published in Science in May, and it revealed that the asymmetry in sea temperature changes is reflected in the breeding success of seabirds. Over the years we've seen, that seabirds have actually declined in the amount of offspring they've had, their eggs have been more fragile, and all of this is a precursor to show us that the marine ecosystem, ocean, and all of the critters and animals that live off marine life are being affected and going to be declining in productivity over the next couple of decades and centuries. It's just a bad precursor for where things are headed. We've got a lot of work to do in fixing the plague that we have become on this planet. The solutions, however, start with you and they start with me. So get involved in helping the planet and spreading knowledge and in using less resources. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about these topics in today's Nature News. Please hit that subscribe button, share this video with a friend and leave a comment down below. I'll see you soon.